Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it is time to talk about Input again. Input, for those of you who don't know, is one of the coolest third-party game maker extensions out there written by Juju Adams and Owen Keith. I've made a whole series of videos on it regarding things like basic use, gamepad vibration, input icons, input rebinding, that kind of thing. And if you've never used it before, I would definitely recommend watching those videos on how to get started. So today we're going to be talking about input cursors, and input cursors are a bit of a general purpose abstraction of mouse controls. So when you're making games on the PC, you often want to have the mouse cursor do things in the game. Uh, if I were to run the sample project, so if I move the mouse cursor around, I'm drawing this red circle at the position of the mouse cursor. And if I move it over on top of this, this frowny face over here, uh, it's going to change to a smiley face. That's really basic, a really basic example of things that you might do with a cursor in a game. You can imagine the sad face is like a UI button or something, and when you when you mouse over the UI button, something happens. Now, what you cannot do with this is simultaneously have this cursor controlled by a gamepad. And while that's maybe not something that you would want to do all that often on a PC game, if you were working with a, for example, a console game, uh, you might want to, instead of have this circle being driven by the mouse, uh, you might want to have this circle on the cursor being driven by, for example, the right analog stick on a gamepad. Right now, I'm holding one of those up in the air and uh, nothing is happening. We are just using the uh, window mask at X, window mask at Y functions for this. So the input extension has a nice solution for this, which is going to be the input cursor. So how to, uh, how to set this up in your project, as always, uh, if you were to go to... Uh, it is currently actually not hosted on Juju's GitHub anymore, but Alain's. Uh, you can go download input the latest release. Uh, input 7, the first version of Input 7 has just come out. I'm actually not going to go with that one just in case there's anything like funny happening inside it that I'm not aware of yet. So we're just going to go um, download the uh, the latest Input 6 release. And uh, did that actually open a Windows Explorer window? It doesn't look like it did. Uh, thanks, Windows. So uh, let's go drag in the Input 631 extension into GameMaker. Import the asset package. Project tool is going to do its thing. I swear this takes longer and longer every time. Anyway, we can add all the input assets. Apparently, I had some of this in this project earlier because some of the uh, the included files are still there. But anyway, I can just import all. So to use the input cursor functions instead of the window mask at X, window mask at Y functions of Game Maker, uh, all we have to do is say input cursor uh, input cursor X and input cursor Y in place of things like window mouse get X, window mouse get Y, or uh, mouse underscore X, mouse underscore Y if you want to use room coordinates. Now when I run this example project, I will still be able to, I will have to click into the game window for it to, like, activate, but I will still be able to have the, the red circle being driven around by the mouse cursor. Alright, that's pretty cool. And also, if I were to hold up the gamepad, you can see that the uh, the red cursor is being driven around by the right stick on the gamepad automatically. I don't even have to do anything to set this up. So if you are using any heavy, if you are making any heavy use of mouse controls in your game, uh, it would not be a terrible idea to use input and to just change all your window mouse X, window mouse Y function calls to use the input cursor. And that way you can have seamless controls between keyboard mouse and uh, gamepads like this. It's very nice. If you're making a game for a device with a touch screen, the input cursor should also handle touch events, but I don't have any device currently set up for use with GameMaker that can uh, make use of touch events, so I'm not going to be demoing that in this video. So there's a couple of things you might notice about this. One is that this cursor speed is rather slow. Uh, there's a couple of setup functions which you can use in input which relate to the, uh, the cursor system. Uh, one of them is input cursor set speed. Input cursor speed set. It was one or the other. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, input cursor speed set. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the default is, but I'm just going to set it to 40. I'm going to set the input cursor speed to 40, and that is going to cause the input cursor speed. All right, game maker. Uh, that is going to cause the input cursor speed to be quite a bit faster uh, when I use the um, when I use the gamepad to control it. All right, so you can use this function to control how your game feels to drive the cursor with the gamepad. You can also just make this a gameplay setting if you'd like. Uh, we also have input cursor set. 
Uh, this is going to set the actual X and Y position of the input cursor on the screen. This is analogous to window uh, mouse set, uh, which will allow you to set the X, Y position of the mouse on the screen. Uh, input cursor set, we can set this to, for example, room width over two, room height over two on game start if we'd like. And that is going to cause the cursor to default to the middle of the screen. Uh, if I were to click into the game window and start moving the mouse, then it, the cursor will just follow the mouse mouse pointer. If I were to um, pick up the gamepad and start driving around the cursor with the gamepad, it would it would follow the gamepad. So that can be handy. So uh, you might, depending on what you're doing, want your um, input cursor to return values in either GUI space, so just basically window coordinates, uh, analogous to the window mouse get x and y functions, or depending on uh, what you're doing with the game, depending on what you're doing with the cursor, you might want it to return coordinates in room space, analogous to the mouse underscore x and mouse underscore y values. So for those who don't know how this works, if you're not doing anything with scaled views or tra um, translated views in uh, in your game maker game, uh, window mouse get x, window mouse get y, and mouse underscore x, mouse underscore y will return the same values. But if you, are, if you have a, a camera that pans around in the game, uh, if you have a camera that can zoom in and out in the uh, in the game world, then mouse X and mouse Y will return the position of the mouse cursor in the room as if they were an object that exists diegetically in the game room, whereas window mouse get X and window mouse get Y will still return the mouse position relative to the screen, relative to the window rather, which means that generally speaking, these functions are what you want to use if you want your mouse cursor to interact with things on the UI uh, and mouse X, mouse Y are what you want to use if you want to uh, to have the mouse interact with things that are actually in the game. Um, input does not have a set of separate functions for returning cursor position in uh, GUI space versus in room space, uh, but there is a function input cursor uh, input cursor coordinate space. That's the input input cursor coordinate space get. We want input cursor coordinate space set. And this is a function which will uh, take an input. Okay, on my notes on my other screen, I almost had it. Input chord space. And this is an enum with three values. We have room. This is the default. So by default, the input cursor will return values in room space. Uh, we have input chord space dot GUI. And this will have the input cursor return its values in GUI space. So this is the window mouse get X, window mouse get Y analog. And there's also dot device. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't really found a use for device. This will return uh, mouse coordinates relative to like the display that you're running on. Maybe if you're doing something funny with mobile, you can make use of this. But uh, generally, because I, I do 3D stuff a lot, so room space doesn't really mean anything. I usually use GUI. Uh, if you're making like a, um, like a top-down 2D game and you want to be able to click on things in the room, you would use... Uh, input chord space dot room. This is something I see tripping a lot of people up sometimes because either they think they're using GUI space coordinates where they're actually using room or the other way around. So make sure that your coordinate space is set to what you think it is uh, when you use the input cursor. Some other fun functions that we have, if you want to limit where the input cursor can go for any reason, we have a set of functions pertaining to that. So. Um, if you wanted to limit the input cursor to a, um, say, a circle in the middle of the screen for any reason, uh, we could use the input cursor limit circle function and set the limit x to room um, width divided by 2, cursor y to room height divided by 2, and uh, let's, um, oh, what do I want to set the radius to? Let's set the radius to like 200 or something. That should be a decently big circle. And now if I were to run the game, then when I uh, when I move the mouse around, you can see that the input cursor is being constrained to a 200 pixel radius around the center of this window. Uh, if I were to pick up the gamepad and if I were to do the same thing, uh, the cursor would still be limited to a 200 pixel radius around the center of the screen. All right, that can be handy in some situations. We also have a set of other input cursor limiting functions which you can use, input cursor limit uh, lim limit ab. So this is going to be basically a rectangle. Ab stands for axis aligned bounding box. It's the fancy nerd word for rectangle, non-rotated rectangle. 
And this is going to take a uh, four coordinates, so a left top and a bottom right uh, value. Well, two 2D coordinates, four numbers. Uh, so if I were to say the, uh, the left uh, limit for this, uh, for the cursor could be 64, maybe 64 and like 100 or so. And then the right limit for the cursor could be like room width minus 100 and room height minus 320 or something like that. This is going to limit the input cursor to a rectangle on the screen, which I can trace out with the mouse if I were to move it around. Uh, it's it's going to look something like this. Uh, again, it will it will also behave that way if I hold up the gamepad. I don't think I have to do that. If you had a limit set and you want to remove it, input cursor limit remove is your friend. This will just uh, unset the limit to whatever it whatever it was. Uh, there's um. There's also an input cursor limit boundary function, and I forget off the top of my head what this does. Does this just like constrain it to the screen? If I set the margin to like 200 or so, is that going to constrain it to like a 200 pixel margin around the edge of the screen? I think that's what it does. Uh, that appears to be what it's doing. Okay, so if you ever want a um, if you ever want the cursor to be limited to just uh, a fixed margin around the edges of the screen, you can use that. All right. That's input cursor limiting. I'm going to comment all that out. Uh, what else do we have? So all of these functions do have getters. You probably saw that in this code help drop down when I was typing things earlier, but input cursor, obviously get X and Y. Uh, you can say input cursor like speed get, and that will return the, uh, the input cursor speed. You can say input input cursor coordinate space get, and that will return the coordinate space that the input cursor is living in. That's true for pretty much every function in input. If there is a setter, there will be an equivalent getter for it or a getter which returns information that you can that you can otherwise use. Also, all of these input cursor functions will optionally take a player index in case you have more than one player hooked up to the game and you want to set the input cursor speed, for example, only one of them. Maybe different players have different desired cursor speeds. Uh, you can set the... Uh, you can set the input cursor limit uh, to either a specific player index, which will default to player index zero, or you can set these. Uh, you can also set these to all if you want these functions to affect all players. So maybe if you're making like a split screen game and you want player one to have the cursor limited to a circle on the left half of the screen, and you want player two to have their cursor limited to a circle on the right half of the screen, you could use the input cursor limit circle function for that, and you could set separate values for player index 1 and player index 0. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Input cursor... I think the last function I'm going to discuss in detail is going to be input cursor elastic set, and this is a bit of a fun function which will cause the cursor to automatically snap back to the um, to an origin point if you stop touching the, uh, the right analog stick on, on the gamepad or something. So if I were to set the input cursor limit circle to the center of the room, and if I were to set uh, the input cursor elastic to room width divided by two, room height divided by two, and if I were to set the strength of this to 0 0.5, uh, if I were to run the game now, so we can, uh, we can still drive the cursor around the circle with the mouse just fine, but if I were to take over with the gamepad, uh, you will see that we are going to now be, and I've, I've got a bit of, this is manifesting itself as some weird gamepad-like drift because this is not a very good controller. Uh, we will, if I take my thumb off the right analog stick, we will snap back to the center of the room. You can use your imaginations to, uh, to find some fun uses for this. You will notice that the apparent cursor limit when I do this is not the full radius that I assigned, and that is because uh, this is basically... Um, I don't think it's a straight lerp. I think it's a uh, an elastic easing curve. Hey. It's basically a, a fancier mathematical interpolation, uh, snapping the cursor back to the center of the room. And if I were to reduce the strength, so if I were to set the uh, the input cursor elastic strength to like 0.1 instead of 0.5, uh, this will allow me to uh, move the cursor in a wider uh, radius around the center of the room before it snaps back. And it will also snap back slower. I want to say what's happening is because, um, wow, that, that drift on my right analog stick is getting really bad. I should just, I tried fixing this controller, like taking it apart, cleaning it out, and, um, 
like trying to straighten out the springs that had gotten like a little bit bent over the years, but it, it didn't work. It worked for a little while, but then it just went back to drifting and I should really just get like a better controller if I'm going to be doing this stuff. Anyway, so this uh, this elastic force on the uh, the input cursor is like constantly driving the cursor back towards its origin point. And that's even going to be happening like while the uh, while I'm holding the gamepad right stick in a certain direction. If I set this to 0.5, it'll be a, a stronger attractive force towards the uh, the origin point. If I set it to a small number like 0.1, then it, it won't be as strong and as attractive force towards the origin point, and I'll be able to move the, uh, the cursor farther towards the actual limit that I set. Uh, the maximum value for this, by the way, is 1, uh, which probably won't actually be very useful, because that will basically just, like, that will immediately move the cursor back to the center of the screen, like, all the way, and so if I, if I try to move it with, a, with the right stick, it won't really do anything. So don't set it to 1, set it to, like, 0.5 or 0.3 or something. So there's one more thing that I'd like to talk about with regards to the gamepad cursor, and that is going to be input uh, cursor gyro. Um, input does have, as I mentioned a few times in the past, gyro control. So like if you have a if, if you have a gamepad or if you have a device which can support orientation in space, uh, you can make use of that to drive the cursor. Uh, that is going to be a separate video. I'd like to make a uh, a video on input gyro and also have it out today, but. I will shortly be going away for Labor Day weekend, and I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that. So if I don't have time to do that, uh, you'll probably see that video sometime in the middle of next week. We'll see. But that's going to do it for me for today. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. I will have links to the input extension down in the description of the video. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found down there as well. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.